This is the Church of St. Paul in the Desert. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. For those of you who were, that were here last Wednesday, I don't know if you remember the quiz, which was connecting the Hebrew scriptures, in this case from Isaiah, with the gospel. Remember how I mentioned that during a good part of the year when we read that Hebrew scripture reading, it's because there's an echo of something that we will find in the gospel. What is that? What is the thing that we find in the gospel also in in the Isaiah passage. No ideas? The healing. Where he says, the eyes of the blind will be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped, the mute will sing. And in the gospel, that's exactly what happens. So Christians have looked at that passage in Isaiah and have heard echoes that made them decide, helped them to understand who Jesus was. In Mark's gospel, this part of Mark's gospel, Jesus do, is doing all sorts of things to let people know who he is. But there's one thing in this particular gospel that I don't want to pass over and ignore. And that's when the woman comes to Jesus and asks him to heal her daughter. And what does Jesus say? He says, the children should be fed first and their food shouldn't be thrown to the dogs. Now I want you to know that there's no special dispensation back in those days for calling somebody a dog any more than there is today. And there's no excuse that I know of for Jesus doing that. Now I, I hear scholars, I read scholars, I hear scholars, preachers who talk about it, who can't imagine Jesus doing anything inappropriate like that. So they've come up with all sorts of reasons why what to, to us is clearly an insult, perhaps was not. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. It was a real insult. Is it possibly because Jesus was trying to get away and this woman burst into his, uh, wherever he was staying, burst into his room and confronted him um, and he was frustrated and said that? I don't have, I don't know. I don't have an excuse. But the interesting thing is, is that when Jesus said it, the woman didn't just turn on her heel and go away. She was not put down. She took whatever he said and she turned it and said, but yes, but even dogs get to eat the scraps. Well, there's an important message in there for us. And the message is not that we all have permission to go and insult people because perhaps they'll use it to have some spiritual growth. That, that's, not, that's not what we can gain from this. I don't know if any of, well, actually probably most of us here um, have parents who grew up during the Depression. And my parents grew up during the Depression and so they had particular ways of doing things that I didn't always understand. Because they weren't sure they'd have enough, so they always, um, they always um, were very careful not to waste anything. They were careful, and th their attitude was, we don't know when we'll get more, so we've got to hold on and take care of this. I think there's some benefit in that, but when, it, when that kind of an attitude about scarcity begins to infiltrate all the rest of our lives, it's not helpful. When that kind of scarcity begins to be applied to God's love and God's mercy, it's not only not helpful, it's unholy, it's wrong. 
Jesus is always going out and expressing God's love and God's mercy. And in this case, this woman called him on it and said, I need some of that, and I'll do whatever it takes for my daughter to get it. Well, this story is kind of right in the middle of, a pa- of passages that are bordered by miracles of feeding. Um, in chapter 6, we're in chapter 7, I'm just trying to keep you all in track. Uh, we're in chapter 7 of Mark's Gospel. In chapter 6, Jesus fed 5,000 people in Galilee. And they've wandered around onto the other side. Then Jesus has gone up north and west, and he's wandered back down to the far side of the Sea of Galilee. There's been healings. And then he feeds 4,000 people on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And his disciples don't get it. Because as they leave that healing, or that, that feeding on the, on the east side of the Sea of Galilee, the disciples are in the boat with Jesus going back to the other side, and one of them says to the other, we've only got one loaf of bread. And they're very concerned that they won't have enough. So Jesus turns to them and said, After we fed the 5,000, how many baskets of leftovers did you have? And they answer, 12. And he says, after we fed the 4,000, how many baskets of leftovers did we have? Seven. And you still don't get it, do you, disciples? That one loaf will be plenty because there will be an abundance. Jesus is sharing that good news all over the place. And this is really critical for us to understand. In Galilee, you remember I talked about uh, Jerusalem is where the temple is. That's kind of the center in Judea, is the center of a particular kind of practice, of religious practice. And in Galilee, where Jesus is, because they don't have a temple, they've learned to do things a little bit differently but they all have basically the same faith. Jesus has now gone into areas that have no Jews at all. They're not welcome there. Jesus is the stranger. Jesus is the outsider going to Tyre, going to Sidon, going to the east side of the Sea of Galilee. Those are areas where he is not necessarily welcome. And how does he behave in those areas? He behaves just like he did in his own pe- amongst his own people. He shares God's good news. He shares God's love. He showers the abundance of God's grace and God's blessing upon everyone he meets. And that's the message that the disciples don't get. This passage today that we're reading, if you will, is sandwiched between two miracles where he's made enough bread for 9,000 people. And it's important to understand that this is at the center of the teaching about God's abundance. That God's love and mercy is there for us, is there for our friends and families and neighbors who are in need, and it's there for everybody outside of us. It's there for the people we wish it wasn't there for. It's there for the people that we're not fond of. It's there for in-laws that we don't necessarily like. God's love is there for everyone. And the message of today's gospel is that Jesus is the one doing acts of power, showing that he's God's chosen one, and that God's chosen one gives a consistent, constant message of welcome, of abundance, of blessing to everyone. And this is going to be something that you will find throughout our liturgy today. Now, you'll find it throughout our liturgy all the time, but your homework right now is as we go through the rest of today's service, 
Look at the various places in which God's love is mentioned or exalted, where the abundance of God's blessing is testified to. When we come forward to receive the bread and the wine, we're receiving the bread, the body of Christ, but we're also receiving that miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 and the 4,000. We're receiving the miracle of the healing of the person who couldn't speak and became, was able to sing and, and praise God. We're receiving the blessing of people who find themselves oppressed by spiritual and other forces and are released by God's grace and love. The reason it's important to see all those places and to realize that we receive it throughout is because when we leave here, Jesus asks us to be that grace, to be that bread, to be that good news and love and care to everyone, everyone we meet. Amen.